Yellowstone supervolcano latest boiling rivers where hot and cold water meet, a study of Leduc hot springs. This is one of the latest updates from USGS on Yellowstone supervolcano where hot and cold water meet, a study of Leduc hot springs using drones and field observations. Who doesn't enjoy a good old-fashioned silk in Yellowstone National Park's Boiling River? The Boiling River is the result of a hot spring that discharges into the Gardner River, and these hot springs and river interactions create not only unique soaking opportunities, but are also known to affect the ecological and physical characteristics of the river. Boiling River is not the only place these interactions take place, just a few miles north of Yellowstone National Park, discharge from a sizable hydrothermal feature, Leduc Hot Springs, mixes with the Yellowstone River. In uh, this, these few weeks, Yellowstone Caldera Chronicles, you can check out some fascinating news. Research about these hot springs done using drones and led by scientists from the Montana Bureau of Mines and Geology and Montana Tech. In the meantime, we had a lot of activity in 2018 from the steamboat geyser in the Norris Geyser Basin. It appears to have entered a phase of more frequent water eruptions, much like it did in the 1960s and the 1980s, although these eruptions do not have any implication for future volcanic activity at Yellowstone. After all, geysers are supposed to erupt, and most are erratic, like steamboat geyser. They are nonetheless spectacular and many people had a chance to see steamboat in eruption during the summer of 2018. In the, the tracking of the geysers updates the count of the steamboat water eruptions. So far in 2018, steamboat has erupted 31 times. That's a new record for a single calendar year. It erupted March 15, April 19, April 27, May 4th, May 13th, May 19th, May 27, June 4th, June 11th, June 5th, July 6th, July 20th, August 4th, August 22nd, August 27th, September 1st, September 7th, September 12th, 17th, 24th and 30th, October 8th, 15th, 23rd, 31, November 7, November 15th, 21, 28th, December 8th, and December 17. Now from the Yellowstone Chronicles, going back to the Leduc Hot Springs, the main discharge from Leduc Hot Springs is collected underground in a chamber or a spring box, visible as a white line north of Highway 89 which fills with geothermal water. The spring box overflow discharges through a culvert under the highway into the Yellowstone River. The discharge and temperature from the spring box are monitored as part of Yellowstone's controlled groundwater area. The study takes advantage of temperature contrast between the hydrothermal discharges and the, color, the cooler river water to observe how spring discharge and river flow interact throughout the year. The Leduc study uses a thermal camera on the drone, river and spring discharge measurements and precipitation to see how Leduc hot springs hydrothermal area changes over the course of the year. Our interest is in the impact of rain, snow melt and river stage on hot spring flow, position and mixing patterns in the river. And to gather the data, they fly the Maurice 600 Pro drone UAV over about a half mile stretch of the Yellowstone River that encompasses the Duke hydrothermal area and during flights both visible and thermal cameras take images every few seconds. We were able to uh, compile the resulting mosaic of images into 3D and temperature maps allowing to analyze changes in seep locations, river surface and temperature. And during each field visit, we use global positioning systems, GPS information, to locate hydrothermal springs and seeps with centimeter level accuracy. We also measure Yellowstone River discharge upstream and downstream from hydrothermal zone 
our ultimate goal is to calculate discharge from the hydrothermal features using a combination of water chemistry, river discharge rates, and temperature data. In addition, we have placed small temperature sensors in steel pipes driven into the riverbed. We'll use information from these temperature sensors to determine the vertical velocity of water, which will help us assess whether the groundwater is entering the river or the river water is entering the aquifer. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, in Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.